me introduce myself. I'm Alex Duong. I'm an engineering manager here at Microsoft. Uh, my name is Caleb Tang. I am a software engineer here at Microsoft. My name is Kelly McLeod and I'm a challenge architect at Top Coder. I assist my two other challenge architects, Ravi and Sarab, who aren't able to join us today running these challenges for Microsoft. Hey guys, I'm Joey Porch. I'm VP of Platform Service at Top Coder. And uh, one of the things I head up is the QA practice um, for Top Coder, working with um, the great team here as well as our team on the Wipro side. What we wanted is to have like a, a test results and a kind of a quick turnaround time and also kind of gives a, a different perspective to, uh, when you have a lot of different people kind of testing your product and testing out the features, you know, they can discover bugs that, you know, we never have thought about before. Another thing is that Microsoft Teams is a global product. So using crowdsourcing actually opens up the scenarios of having global testers, uh, which is traditionally more difficult when we have a captive team model. One of the things about the top quarter model is really that it truly is crowdsourced in the sense of we don't know who is going to be testing our, our feature set week to week. I think other testing models are either a like 100% captive assigned test, uh, testers who are testing your feature set, or they have a pool of testers which you get some testers from that pool. It actually opens up a much, much wider pool of testers. Now that comes with its own challenges and that we need to make sure that our feature set is well documented. We need to make sure that our ramp up is, uh, is fast for these testers, that they aren't confused about our feature set. So I actually see this as like a next step for us as something that um, we can continue to leverage more and more of. Um, like what would it look like for us to continue to grow in our global presence of our testers um, to have testers from different languages using Microsoft Teams in their own native native tongues and other UI issues that might not surface when the app is just tested in English. There's just so much potential when we have the opportunity to have testers from all over the world test our app. And that's something that um, I'm excited for us to continue to, to grow in and to, to leverage for, from top quarter. The ability to kind of like, you know, have our developers focus and uh, develop features quickly and get that fast response time in terms of like the issues that are discovered from uh, the top coder uh, challenges. I think it's been super helpful having that tight feed feedback loop. Being able to give bug feedback daily and to have uh, a daily cadence of discussing feedback and how to evolve our bug process and how to get better really, really makes our test process go a lot stronger. Um, it forces our engineering team and our product team to just be really, really um, precise and, and clear with our requirements. Um, that's actually been one of the, I think, the great side effects of uh, moving to a crowdsourced model um, because it just catches all of your kind of documentation deficiencies. Usually when uh, when you when when new products are kind of developed, you're going through like an early phase of prototyping. You want to be able to move fast and see like what sticks and what doesn't stick. And so having that kind of tight relationship with the crowdsourcing community to give you that feedback, both in terms of like, you know, does this feature make sense or I'm, I'm completely confused on how this works. And then, you know, discovering the, the, the issues right away and providing that feedback back to the development team. Also, um, crowdsourcing gives us the opportunity of scaling. We can scale up testing significantly and then we can also scale it down. Um, and there's that flexibility of with feature sets and all that stuff. And so for, for new products, um, even as I think about Microsoft Teams, we have the ability to start in crowdsourcing. And it might not, it might not actually be that many test cases or that many challenges, right? But as products grow, uh, the, the it's it's easy to scale explosively and to add a lot of test cases and to find a lot more um, people and testers to be looking at our feature sets and our apps, um, as opposed to the alternative model, which I think is important, but it also does have its limitations where we can bring in kind of new hires and experts to be looking at the feature sets and the apps individually but it's, it's just a little bit more difficult to, to scale uh, that, that quickly. We've been kind of exploring two, two different styles of testing. One is the kind of regression test where we, you know, you guys run through like the test cases and stuff, right? 
And and then there's the other part where it's like there's more of a exploratory testing where you're like, hey, just go play with the product and see if you just break the product, right? And so this is where like the crowdsourcing model, like, you know, having that variety of uh, uh, perspectives really helps in terms of testing and stuff in, in that area and stuff. And I think that's super useful. In our exploratory tests, our crowd is actually really good at coming in and finding things, breaking things, and kind of parsing apart uh, the functionality code and security and typos and stuff like that. The scripted test cases are different in that they're o that they're structured, and our crowd doesn't really get to go in and just kind of like break things like they're really good at doing. So there's a little bit of retraining that we've had to do um, for like, this is what we're asking you to do and please report your findings in this way. Yeah, I would, I would add on to that. One of, some of the things that are different with that model too is with the um, just running an exploratory test, you're basically saying, here's the application. We're telling them maybe the devices to test on, but otherwise it's kind of free reign. Where with the structured structured tests and doing test cases, we really have to focus on how we execute to make sure that you know people are actually picking up the test cases. They only hold on to the test case for so long because if they don't complete it, we need to pull it back out and make it available to someone else to execute. So operationally, it's it's I would say the scripted is more um, intensive just in terms of all of the elements of execution that take place uh, versus the exploratory testing. But both have their values, right? And both prove both both are are needed for 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 hardcore uh, applications like this that are used on a global scale. Traditionally. Uh like regression testing, scripted test cases uh, have been run by captive test teams or dedicated testers. What new workflows have you guys had to develop to make it work and to be able to provide regression testing for Microsoft Teams? Since we usually do bug hunts and bug bashes like part of um, our regular offerings, uh, we've had to be a little bit more strict with the reporting. Um, and a reporting template for here's the platform, here's the steps to reproduce, and here's what I found. Um, and it was a little bit more open-ended for our crowd as well as the uh, challenge architects uh, administratively. Yeah, I, I think that's true. So, so one of it was looking at how can we be more efficient. We ran structured test cases before, uh, but typically it wasn't at the volume, I, I would say, probably that we're doing for, for Microsoft. Um, so really looking at what our tool sets, are, tool sets are that we're using for the structured test cycles how we can be more um, efficient in, in the time that it takes for us to set those up and the time that it takes for our co-pilots and the time that it takes for the community members to actually you know, get access to things um, and, and report. Because with, with all of our test cycles here, they're 24 hours. It's, it's been beneficial from both sides. So it's helped us come and improve our process and it's also kind of pushed you guys to push, adapt to the, you know, the new, new process as well and stuff. So I think it's been good for both sides. Um, the variety of devices is one, right? Making sure we're getting device coverage. Um, and so that's pushed us to make decisions internally with how to provide better access or a wider variety of access to the community members to devices to test with, because they're not always gonna have the devices that um, are required for a test cycle. So how can we provide those to provide more opportunities, but also ensure better coverage and ensure um, execution of test cases for those devices? Yeah, I think for me, as I think about um, the collaboration between Microsoft Teams and Wipro and Topcoder, one of the things that we've been working on is making sure that we get our bug feedback to our testers. And it's often easier if you had know the same tester and it's the same tester every week. Um, it's That feedback is very easy to communicate and hopefully they follow it. Um, but because we're using a crowdsourcing model, this hasn't been as easy. And I really appreciate and I really like how um, we're able to collaborate um, between the top coder challenge architects, between myself and the product team, the program managers on, on Wipro that are managing uh, our communication is just keeping kind of a backlog of feedback and seeing how week to week, even though it's different people, it's often different people testing the app, it's different um, competitors testing the app, that feedback is still heated. Um, and I think it's it's just been magical how that's been happening. And I think that's been one of the the most satisfying things to watch. 
So there's the shifts app that we're working on and that's scheduling. There's the chat, there's different teams, there's meetings, there's calls, there's files. You could almost, and I'm not going to say make it an operating system for a contained um, device that you really want to crack down on for your employee management, but you could. Um, there's almost everything there if you wanted to make it an operating system for a really locked down device um, where you were using it for employee management. It's amazing to see how much more efficient everybody has gotten by having an open dialogue, particularly like in our Microsoft Teams channel where both Arlaya and I, we can be syncing offline uh, that the product team and the Wipro folks, we have our, you know, our conversations and then we can post feedback and have it seen by everybody. We can have it seen by both the Wipro captive team and also by the top coder challenge architects. We can then communicate that back. It just becomes a lot more efficient communication. And then we, we get to end up doing the things that we want without having to repeat our efforts.